Hello, Gary Byrne. Hello, Gary Byrne. This is Ethan Ralph of the Killstream. How you doing, sir? Good, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, obviously, um, you wrote a uh, number one uh, New York Times bestselling book, Crisis of Character, about some of your history in the Secret Service. I think, was it 13, right. 13 years uh, as a uh, uniform division of the Secret Service and, and further experience right. with, with the service beyond that, um, and just involved in federal law enforcement for, what, 25, 30 years. Um, right. So obviously... <laughs> The topic of the day is the second assassination attempt uh, on Donald Trump. Now, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff flying around. Uh, I guess you could say, uh, and help uh, with a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. First off, let me get your take uh, on what happened yesterday, and then I have my own question. That's sort of a a, a newsmaker, I guess you might say, uh, that I got from an uh, an impeccable source. We both know, but uh, sure. I don't want to go into. Sure. into it too deeply uh, to reveal anything uh, too much because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But um, what's your take on what happened yesterday? So uh, before I, I tell you the uh, comment on that, you, uh, you do know the second book, Secrets of the Secret Service. Yes, right? yes. And you know what? I was just talking about that, Secrets of the Secret right. Service, and I was reading, right. and I, I'll admit I've not read the book, but I was no, reading the, the, the byline, or not the byline, but yeah. the description, and it says, yeah. Byrne says that decades of catastrophic public failures, near misses, and bureaucratic and cultural rot threaten to erode this critical organization from the inside out. Now, this was written almost five years ago, and I was sitting here, and I read this to my audience, and I was like, well, that, that sounds kind of spot on to what we're seeing uh right now uh what, what right. what's your take i don't want to say i don't want to say i'm right i want to say that i was concerned and my concerns unfortunately are coming true yeah and so, i read i read that and i was like wow okay that's what we're yeah. witnessing uh yeah. in real time so before, I just, before i distracted you what were you gonna what were you Cloud saying and trigger you sent five well I, I just on a slip up. Well, I, I was just going to ask your Smiley take, um, like your personal take uh, yeah. on what happened yesterday. Now, we can talk about the first uh, attempt as well. But obviously, you know, Trump almost got his head blown off three months ago. Uh, you yeah. would think that nobody would be allowed uh, 300 to 500 you yards would, away with an AK. Yeah. You would think that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, what happened yesterday was the second complete failure in the last 60 days that we know of, or yes. whatever, whatever the timeline was between Butler, Pennsylvania, and what happened in Florida. Um, there is no excuse for it. There is, I don't care what they tell you. He's not a sitting president. Okay, that, that used to ring true. There, there were certain things that you did for, for a former president or a protectee, but this guy's a former president who is the front runner for the Republican Party He's very controversial, and the idea that they did not did not detect somebody driving up to a fence line on a golf course he was at, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Uh, listen, I've worked 50 of those details, 50 at least. George Herbert Walker Bush, Bill Clinton. Um, I don't think I ever did any for, for uh, uh, W, but I did other you know outside recreation events. I did many, many of these things. There's no excuse for it. They are undermanned. They're making poor decisions. And um, you know, one of the things that came out from the incident in Butler, Pennsylvania, was the ship leader released a, a statement saying that his the, the uh, deputy directors that he requests more help from told him to stop requesting because they didn't want to leave a, a record of them refusing protection for him. What does that tell you? They're not doing their jobs. Now, is it, you know, there's some more uh, conspiratorial minded um, folks out there um, yeah. who think yeah. that maybe they're not, not that the Secret Service itself um, is, you know, trying to get him knocked off or whatever, although I've seen that. I've seen people say that. Um, more, yeah. I, I don't believe that personally, but uh, more that maybe there are some other elements uh, within the government or, um, you know, on the inside, with inside knowledge of Trump's movements, et cetera, um, who may right. want to see him dead. Right. So, so you have many moving parts to this. The first one you have to, and this goes to anything that, you know, that the Secret Service is involved in with a protectee. And it's hard for the average person, the average, you know, 99% of the world's population, what they know about the Secret Service comes from movies and TV, sure. you know, and it's all polished and, and it looks good, right? And it's all romantic and, and 
and dramatic. That's not what reality is. The Secret Service, and I said this in, in, the, in the book, Secret to the Secret Service, the Secret Service has all the problems of the IRS and the Postal Service, and then some. And the problem is, is when they make a mistake, it's not that a package doesn't get delivered. It's that, uh, you know, one of the most popular leaders in our history almost gets his head blown off twice within, you know, a, a, a two-month period almost. And um, so the the ideal that the Secret Service is willingly trying to get him killed, no. It, it's incompetency. Is there somebody who is is taking advantage of this incompetency and trying to make it harder to protect him? Absolutely. But the biggest problem in the Secret Service is that it, it is so, it's management, it's, it's an upside down Christmas tree. Picture in your mind what a Christmas tree looks like upside down. The point at the bottom and the large part at the top, that's Secret Service management. They have expanded, like most government agencies. When I left the Secret Service in 2003, their budget was like $900 million. Today, it is over $3 billion. That is a lot of money. I'm not saying uh, that the, the budget doesn't need to be that. What I'm saying is, and a lot of insiders that are still there today say this, is they're spending it on the wrong stuff. You can't tell me that it's okay to protect a president with agents from other agencies and, and, and that haven't been properly trained. And that's what we saw in Butler, and that's what we're still saying. You, you just cannot... There's no way that they can justify the fact that nobody detected this guy yesterday on the fence line in a car with a large rifle with a scope on it. I'm sorry. And, and I don't know, we don't know what all the facts are yet. And there's, there's the information out there that somebody from the Secret Service fired some return shots. Who cares? That, that, that doesn't mean a thing. That's not, it should have never gone that far. He should have been detected and stopped way before that. And if somebody did take shots at him, it wasn't it wasn't the proper setup. There was probably somebody from the motorcade, which you know it should have been somebody from Counter Sniper. Again, they the the to be fair though to the Secret Service and to Mr. Trump, the the, the what they were doing was called an OTR, an off the record. It wasn't planned. They do it at the last minute. It gives you a, a pretty good buffer of security because nobody knows. You know, most people don't know that you're going to be there, right? right. It's a public golf course. It's, well, it's a golf course that, you know, that Trump owns and his name is on it. And he goes there and he lives not too far from there. So it wouldn't have been hard from this for this assassin to just happen to be in the right place at the right time and recognize the motorcade. I mean, you know, whatever, however big the motorcade is, we'll say it's nine cars, six to nine black cars going down the road in the vicinity of either where he lives or where the golf course is. It's not a it's not a stretch, right? No. But uh-huh. again, that's. Yeah, that's not an excuse why the Secret Service didn't detect this guy. They are not they are not using their assets the way I was trained. They're not doing they have fallen way off the wagon. And well, if it's not if it's not incompetence, it's worse, like you just said. Well, and I have a question. I'll get to that in a minute, but uh sure. perhaps it's worse. But I um you know, there's all these talks about perimeters and this and that. Um I mean, should not the, the, the roads going into the course itself have been, like, shut down or checkpointed, uh, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not, busting, I'm not busting your chops, but exactly. Yeah. Right. Anywhere, any road, any road, not necessarily shut down. Right, but checkpointed, but, right? But monitored. Yeah. Right. Control. You pull up. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Well, I'm going golfing. Do you have any weapons in the car? No. Open right. the trunk. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and and listen, based on the three pictures I've seen of this guy, if they had stopped him, they would have arrested him right there. He could not hide his behavior. I can't explain it to you. Well, I can't explain it to you. Um, how uh, do you have any kids? Yes, I do. Actually, I have two children. How, okay, so when they were little, and you looked at one of them, and you said, "Hey, did you go to the bathroom in your pants?" And their little lips stuck out, and you know they put their head down. You knew what the answer was, right? He, he's telegraphing his emotions, or the child is, and and that's what adults do. I don't care how trained they are. Um, this guy, based on the history we know about him right now, he would have he would have probably blurted out that he was getting ready to kill him. He couldn't stand that nobody knew. Like that's how crazy a crazy person is when it comes to assassination. And um, they would have scooped him up there. The fact that they weren't doing that because they weren't granted the manpower 
And again, it's not how long has it been since Butler, Pennsylvania? This is insane. Clearly, the Oval Office, the head of Homeland Security, and the head of the Secret Service are not trying to protect this guy. They're not. They're just trying to make it look like they are. And I, and I say that in many cases in, in, in Secrets of the Secret Service. I give you many examples through history just to let your listeners know. But it, you know, by the time John Kennedy gets shot in Dallas, Texas, four other presidents have been shot at open vehicles. Why were we still using open vehicles? What is our learning curve? How stupid are we? And we're still duplicating that dumb crap today. Now, I wanted to ask you this. Now, this this comes from somebody we both know, and I won't uh, pull out any names because sure, I don't want any uh, identifications no, 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 no. Of, of the source. Yeah. But um, they communicated directly uh, with a with a GO, GOP congressman, uh, and that congressman. And I know some people who hate me are not going to believe this, but this is a legit uh, source. Uh, right. Said that uh, they believe someone is leaking Trump's location. Uh, and yeah. I and you know this person wanted me to ask you: Do you believe something like that could possibly be going on? Do I believe it's possible? Absolutely, absolutely. You have to remember again how crazy people are about him. You know, it, it just it just amazes me. Listen, I don't know if the guy ever ran over a squirrel with his car let alone uh, you know, this, this manufactured. And, it's, and again, this is one of the reasons when I wrote, well, let me answer your question. Yes, I believe it's possible. Um, I believe it's easier. I believe if it's somebody inside the government, I believe it's somebody in Homeland Security, possibly in the Secret Service or above the Secret Service. It's absolutely possible. I believe they're that crazy. I believe this but don't, don't forget, when President Trump was president, there was a Secret Service agent, a woman, who was a GS-15, the special agent in charge of an office, who was, should have been fired because she publicly put on Facebook that she wouldn't take a bullet from him for, for him and that how much she didn't like him and that she was on Hillary's side. And then when it became more public, the Secret Service tried to deny it. They tried to make it go away. And then what really brought it to a head was that the, that the spouses of the agents in that office who were afraid for their their, their uh, husbands or wives that were Secret Service agents went public and went to the Secret Service. And they should have fired her, but they didn't fire her. They did what they always did. They just moved her into another spot in Homeland Security, and she retired with a very cushy pension. The, the Secret Service clearly needs a – I'm not saying a routing of anybody that doesn't agree with the conservative mentality. You need somebody – you need people in there that can keep their mouth shut. Uh, it, it's listen. When I was in the Secret Service, there were plenty of people that didn't like the people we protect. I was not thrilled with the Clintons. Clearly, I wrote a book about them later <laughs> on. But when I was protecting them, you know, well, my, uh, jokingly, somebody asked me what my what my threshold was, and I said that Bill Clinton got me subpoenaed six times, um, and I ended up having to testify against him. Uh, that was the threshold. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that was the threshold yeah, for so, silence. Like, okay, at this point, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so. Yeah. So, so they, so, you know, I've worked with people Sunday who liked them, didn't like them. Most, most people Thank you for your like insight. The, their as unconventional as it may sound, like is there some legal made, restrictions on Trump protect, carrying his own we weapon for personal no protection? What. And if, and this ideal that it's okay to publicly state on Facebook or social media, that, that statement and not be immediately fired. This is, this is another, this is another clue. If anybody in Congress is listening, this is another clue for them of how bad the Secret Service is. And you can go back through history and point to things like this, mistakes, things that should have been, you know, oh, well, that's just a one-off thing. It's not a one-off thing. The Secret Service, you know, has got huge amounts of problems. And, and um, so, you is know. Is it that uh, they're doing too much? Um, yeah, that is part of it. That is part of it. So they've got too many protection details. And the, the way that, so when Bill Clinton was president, he passed a law that presidents would only get protection for 10 years on the government's dime. Yeah. And then you would have to pay for it out of yourself. And because um, the first president that did that was actually Richard, Richard Nixon. When Nixon left office, he was, he was embarrassed. He was ashamed. He, so, you know, he was, had some humility. So he waived his Secret Service protection. It's a legal thing. You have to sign a document removing them from responsibility. And then he hired a former Secret Service agent, and they protected him um, all those years until he passed away. So I didn't know that actually. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, um, so Bill Clinton passed the, the law ten years, and then you pay for it yourself. 
Um, as soon as Barack Obama got in there, he changed it back yes. to a lifetime, which means that if if these rumors and this, well, not any rumors, but there's obvious, you know, uh, these politicians that were protecting the Clintons, the, the Obamas, are doing this corrupt stuff and, and putting pressure on the legal system to go after this guy, to go after Trump with, with, you know, we're protecting them as they're destroying our country. We're paying for it. So I think the first thing, uh, if Trump gets elected, is he needs to change that law and let these, uh, you know, they, they all have plenty of money. Let them pay for their own protection. And, and, um, and, and the same with himself, you know. And, and I would, I would, and when I left this, when I joined, excuse me, when I joined the Secret Service in 1991, they had 12 protection details. 12. When I left in 2003, 12 years later, they had 27. And their budget had only expanded a couple of hundred million dollars. When I left the Secret Service, their budget was about nine hundred million dollars. Today, it's over three billion. And they're trying to tell the Congress and the American public that they can't hire enough manpower to protect Donald Trump or anybody else. Hey, if this was happening to Michelle or Barack Obama, oh God, people would be losing their minds, losing their minds. I mean, there'd probably you know, be violence in the streets, honestly. Uh, we no, <laughs> right, right. And so it is unacceptable. It, it is, there's many things going on here, but the first thing you have to look at is the corruption and the stupidity. And clearly, based on some of the statements that were made by the former director and this deputy director that's either resigning or about to resign, there is a huge slant mentally towards the Democrats, whether these, these the higher-up echelons, uh, the secret service is corrupted somehow financially whatever but there is something that it needs to be looked into and and um and it needs to be fixed uh among many other things they need to reduce the secret service's size as far as management not their employees their management and uh they they need to you know it's just insane they, they need to do their jobs and they're not yeah, and you know, you talked about Hollywood and uh, Secret Service has basically been lionized. And, and I talked about this earlier. Right. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't call it a, it's not a branch of government, but, uh, you know, an organ, you know, a part of government, right? Uh, and pretty much been highly respected uh, by the American yeah. public throughout history, or at least my during my uh, adult life, right? Uh, and right. it wasn't about whether you agreed with uh, the president politically or this or that or an ex-president politically. It was... These were heroes uh, ready to literally take a bullet uh, to right. save the lives of the of the people they were sworn to protect, uh, which right. is a, quite a noble <laughs> endeavor, right? I mean, sure it you, is. It uh, is. especially yeah. for somebody you might not even like or agree with politically, right? Like, right. I mean, that's that's right. about as noble as it gets. Um, right. And you know, I, I see, you know, especially on the right. Uh, the, these last couple of attempts, you know, you, you see the Secret Service uh, losing respectability uh, yeah. amongst the populace. And hey, I can personally. Can I interrupt you for a second? Sure, you I'm may. Sorry. Anytime you wish. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to have to hang up. I've got an issue up uh, upstairs in my house i got to take care of. I'm so sorry. Can we do this again or add yeah. on to this later? Sure, but can I ask you this question real quick? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you for your insight. Uh, as as unconventional as it may sound, is there some legal restrictions on Trump carrying his own weapon for personal protection? Yeah, there is. There is because they don't want an accident. And but um, yeah, there is. There is a law. There was a law written that they. Uh, matter of fact, they don't even like they have to. The Secret Service has to help control their guns in their house. Like if they're they're hunters. I know the the Trump boys are big hunters and stuff. So they have to, you know, know where everything is, and sure. there is a there is a guideline and a law against that. But so, no, that's okay. I mean, yeah, as far as being protected. If you got something you got to yeah. take care of, real quick, uh, just go ahead and we'll uh, reschedule. I'd love to have you back because I had a uh, few, right. few more Give questions. Me, catch up, with, catch up with me tomorrow. I'll be glad to do it. Okay, awesome. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Gary Byrne here. Now, originally we were gonna do it. Okay. Uh, so I'll message him. Uh, obviously, something came up really quick there. <laughs> I don't think we were too spicy. Uh, um, yeah, I we still got about uh, let's see about twenty minutes in, uh, but um, yeah, I knew I knew that there was some kind of reason uh, that they couldn't like pack their own heat. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, it was going great. That's why I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll get him back on. He seemed, uh, he seemed, he said hit him up tomorrow and we'll get him back on. Um, yeah, so it's clearly something, uh, I don't want to speculate. Um, but I, I was going to actually, I wanted to ask him about that post. And he kind of mentioned it. Um, and you know, um, from that Health Ranger guy where it says, a source tells me the leak of Trump's whereabouts is coming from Homeland Security, not USSS, which is a secret. Uh, Homeland Security is leaking location details to FBI, and FBI is running the assassins. The entire top leadership of the FBI is desperately trying to figure out how to eliminate Trump, while the loyal elements of the U.S. Secret Service are trying to stop it. Uh, Homeland Security and U.S. State Department are full-on treasonous criminal ops at this point. Now, again, I don't know if he co-signs all this, but he, he kind of... Uh, he didn't say this exactly. I don't want to quote, quote him as saying this, but uh, he kind of, um, you know, alluded to like interdepartmental warfare. Uh, it was a great call. I know I hate that it got cut short, uh, but we still got about 20, 25 minutes in, so it wasn't too bad. Um, but he said hit him up tomorrow, so maybe we can get him back on tomorrow. That'd be great. Um, but. Um, yeah, I did have I did have a few more questions. I got the main question in uh, that I wanted about that G GOP congressman, um, elected official. <laughs> Actually, I mean, you know, it's one thing, and I'm not trying to offend Alex Jones or Alex Jones fans or you know con more conspiratorial minded uh, people, but it's one thing to see. Um, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to try to. I mean, I'm going to try to have him back on tomorrow uh, if he's down. Uh, obviously. Obviously, something uh, came up pretty, pretty quickly there, uh, and that's okay. I think he's used to doing shorter radio hits and stuff like that, anyway. Uh, so that would have been about the length of a, of a short radio hit. Um, but um, originally, we were going to have him tomorrow, but um, anyway, uh, we ended up doing it today. Maybe I should have just put it off till tomorrow, but I wanted to do it today because it just happened. But tomorrow it'll be just as fresh anyway. But um, great guest nonetheless. Very cool you got him on. Yeah, I agree. And I'll text him here in a little while. I hope everything's okay and there's nothing too serious uh, going on. It was maybe just a mishap um, with the the cats. I hope one of the Haitians didn't get his cat or something like that. Um, but... Um, yeah, I had some. I had some more questions. Like, what? Well, he kind of said what he would do uh, if he was head of the Secret Service. Um, right there at the, uh, not the very end, but right before the very end, he kind of kind of alluded uh, to what he would do uh, if he was running the joint. But uh, yeah, I had a I had a few more uh, questions. So hopefully, we can have him back on. And I would like to talk uh, more about his book. Maybe I'll try to read some of his book. Uh, between now and the next time we get him on, even if it's tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I hate that it got cut off a little prematurely, but, um, you know, these things happen on live uh, live formats, so you can't really you can't really control it. And then if you record something, it's not the same. I mean, I've played recorded segments on the show. Sometimes they've done okay, but, you know, it's a live show. People want to see this live, right? Um, so yeah, great guest nonetheless, even with just what he dropped in those, uh, you know, 20, 25 minutes, uh, was pretty fucking solid, uh, in and of itself. Um, but, uh, and I like that he even took, even though he had to go real quick, he even took the time, uh, to answer Sonny D's super chat there. Um, but yeah, I'll message him here in a little while, uh, and see if we can, uh, reschedule if not for, uh, tomorrow, maybe sometime, uh, later in the week or sometime soon, but uh, it didn't seem to be any um, any heat towards me. I think he was enjoying uh, the interview as I was, so I don't think it was um, I don't think it was anything I said uh, or did. But um, let's see. Um, but now, what I read about the um, about the departments, like the FBI running assassins and all that, and, and this and that, he didn't say anything like that. Um, but he did seem to point to like, you know, these departments aren't really trying to protect Trump like they should be. And there's probably some bureaucratic, I mean, if anybody studied Washington or politics, um, you know, that there's art, there's, there are always like bureaucratic turf wars and who should be doing this and who should be doing that. And there's a, you know, politics, I say this all the time is a competition over resources. Well, guess what? 
All these, yeah, thank you, A.O. Anderson. I appreciate that. That was excellent, even if it was just 20 minutes. It was more like a radio hit, yeah. Um, so, um, but, um, you know, it's a competition over resources, and it's a competition over resources between these bureaucratic entities as well. Uh, and they're always trying to justify why they need more money than so-and-so and why their budget needs to be increased and they need more of this and that. And it sounded to, sound to me like he wasn't talking about cutting the number of agents. He was talking about cutting the number of, you know, a C-suite, I guess you would say, uh, in business, um, you know, um, management, basically, right? Uh, less people for them to answer to, less, um, less bureaucratic garbage uh, in the way is what it sounded like he was calling for. Uh, so um, I, I think he would know a lot more about it than me, and that sounds like a, a pretty a pretty good call. And I, and I, I did mention his book, uh, the second book that he wrote, uh, and we read some of the bio on it, and I was like, well, damn, um, he pretty much called that spot on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll message him. Uh, I hope everything... Uh, let's see. But uh, yeah, I think even the even the 20 minutes... Uh, uh, well, it was about maybe a little bit over 20 minutes, like 22, 23 minutes, something like that. Uh, too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Yes, that's a great way to put it, actually. Uh, and I think that's exactly what he's saying. And also you get confusion over the more um, of those C-suite uh, you know, managerial types you have. You get confusion over who you're supposed to be answering to or certain groups start lobbying this, uh, this person or that person or, you know, trying to get... Um, you know, more, more, you, you know what I mean? Like, um, it's, it's turf war type stuff within the, their own agency, not just turf war between, uh, agencies, but, um, oh, let me try to influence this boss or, oh, this boss doesn't like my idea. Let me go to that boss and do this and that. And so, um, you know, that, that can definitely be, uh, that can definitely be a real issue. So, um, yeah, that does make perfect sense. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll see if we can, uh, if we can reschedule that and get them back on for a little bit longer. Although, I mean, I hit everything I wanted to hit, uh, anyway. Um, but, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Message. Oh yeah, for sure. Let's see. <laughs> Let me see. He said, yeah, he said everything's okay. Uh, we, we might just bring him back on now. We'll see. Um, I was like, for sure. I was like, I'd love to have you back. Name the time. I was like, now if you want. I was like, <laughs> we do we do a long show uh, here, uh, or we can do it tomorrow. You know, either way, uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. But um, uh, but yeah, it sounded like he just had something real quick. I mean, look, not everybody's on stream eight hours a day, nine hours a day like me. You know, something pops up, it's like, okay, I want to call. Oh, awesome. Okay. Okay, so we're back now. Okay, cool. I was just, it just, uh, I mean, it just sounded like worried, but it just sounded like, oh, something I got to take care of real quick, uh, you know, uh, and those things happen. And, you know, you've seen, it has to be extreme. Uh, for me to leave the desk, but sometimes I do, you know, sometimes smoke's done something or something, somebody's outside yelling something, you know, sometimes things happen. Uh, call him back. Hey, thank you for doing that for me. Oh, no problem, man. Like I said, um, uh, and thank you, Gary Byrne, former uh, Secret Service uh, agent here on the call with us again. Uh, no problem whatsoever. My show is so long, it's no big deal at all <laughs> to to, no to have a little bit of a delay there. Um, sure. 
But um, I, I, we were kind of talking about um, some of the things you had said, and even in that 20, 25 minutes, uh, you, you kind of hit a lot of important points already. Uh, but you talked about not reducing the number of agents, but re reducing the number. I, I guess I use the term uh, C-suite managers, basically, or people. Um, yeah. Too many. Eleventh floor. I think we used to call them the eleventh floor. The eleventh floor. Because that's yeah, where they all are. <laughs> the eleventh floor is that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so and, and and over the years, I've seen them do things that, you know, that that I thought were very odd, like th that were leading to this thing where they were making themselves so elite and and growing themselves so big that they w would forget what their real job was. And one of those things was when they built the new headquarters building, which is probably close to twenty years old now. Yeah. Um, each each director, uh, uh, each uh, senior person um, on the SES scale, which is like deputy directors, uh, assistant director, the director, all their offices were all uh, glass and they had magnetic locks like we use at the White House so they could keep people out. And my first question was, why do you want to keep your employees out? You know, what is it you're going to do to us that we, you think we're, you're in danger? You know, like... If, you're you literally know, the Secret Service. <laughs> yes, I'm yeah, right. No, exactly. No, that's exactly what I said. You know, and, and I thought to myself, and, um, you know, because I got a tour of the new headquarters building years ago, and right before it opened, right before they had the, you know, the big opening, and I was like, you all are behind locked magnetic doors? Like, what are you going to do to us? And the, and the guy was my buddy. He's like, oh, yeah, that's just uh, whatever. And I'm like, yeah. Right, you know, and and so you know, you fast forward, and all those little things add up to this agency that, you know, I don't know, I haven't been on their website in, in a month, but the last time I went on it, right after ben Butler, Pennsylvania, still had up on the website that said zero fail job or something like that, zero fail mission, and the first thing I said when I did my first interview after Butler was after that was uh, they need to take that down because. That's not true. It's never been well, true. That's never been true. You have to say. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Hey, well, ask John Kennedy. Yeah, ask John Kennedy. <laughs> ask Reagan. Ron Reagan. Yeah. Jerry Ford. Do, do you and your listeners realize that after – so I'll, I'll just – let me tell you this real quick. It'll probably take me five minutes. Sure, go ahead. So, so John Kennedy gets assassinated in 63. And like I said, four other people have been shot out in open cars. So after his assassination, set aside all the conspiracy theories, right? They have this commission, and, and the commission suggests all these things, politely suggests all these things the Secret Service should do. And Congress gives the Secret Service money to do all these things, and then they don't do them. Now, they have a history of this. They have a history of requesting money from, the, from Congress. We need 150 agents and 300 uniform division officers before the next election. Congress gives them the money. They hire 75 agents and 150 uniform division officers, and then who knows what they do with the money. But anyway, back to this part of the story is, is so they, they, they're told to do these things, these certain, take these certain security steps, and they don't do them. Now, I'm not going to tell you what they are yet. So then sure. you fast forward, right? And then, so Gerald Ford is president. Richard Nixon leaves office in shame. I talked about that earlier, right? right. And, and, um, and hires his own security. So... Jerry Ford's president. Well, while he's president, in a um, for four years, or maybe it was a little bit more than four years because um, the way he got, anyway. So he's president. In a, in a 14 day period, two women in two separate instances try to assassinate him with a handgun in the public, unsecured public. It happened twice in 14 days. One, the the most famous. Now this won't mean anything to you, but it will to people you probably your parents age the woman's name was squeaky annette from and she was actually a follower of charles manson uh, is that name familiar to yes you? the manson family yeah and i know a little bit right. about squeaky from yeah right right so squeaky from was one of his followers she tries to kill jerry ford and, and another woman did too the sort of ironic thing about it is squeaky from was actually a shooter and just coincidentally a week before she had been sending threats to the Secret Service through the old mail system. So they went to interview her. And while they're interviewing her, she starts bragging to the agent about this revolver, this Smith & Wesson revolver that she has, and how good of a shot she is. So they either confiscate the gun or they talk her out of it. They take the gun from her. 
which is fine, right? Yeah. So then she, she goes to the store and buys a new gun. But the gun she buys is a semi-automatic. It's a, it's a, 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 a Colt model 1911. And you have to cock the gun or, or rack it to fire it. And she didn't realize that. And in the panic, when she got close enough to Ford, in the unsecured crowd, she pulled the gun out, stuck it, at, you know, pointed it at Ford, and somebody saw it, and they tackled her. And then the Secret Service, you know, tackled her. But if she had, if she had a revolver, she probably would have killed him, or if she knew how to use that gun. So again, during the, during the investigation in the Kennedy assassination, this is one of the things they told them they should stop doing. They gave them the money. They funded it. And they, they didn't they weren't doing it. They weren't securing the press corps and they weren't and they were letting the president go into unsecured crowds without some kind of security ring around them, like they do today, most of the time. Then, they still do that. I've seen them do that still. Yeah. Well they we do secure we do we the crowd is secured in certain ways. I won't go into the details. Sure, don't but yeah. there, there's a way to do it. And then now fast forward, this happens to Ford. And then I uh, forget exactly how many years later, Ronald Reagan becomes president. And then John Hinckley tries to kill him. And John Hinckley gets close enough to shoot at Reagan because he gets in to the press corps. Nobody realizes he's not supposed to be there because it's unsecured. And then as they're bringing Reagan, Reagan out, of the, out of the Hilton Hotel, today known as the Hinckley Hilton, as they're bringing him out of the secured hotel, they walk him 25 feet to the, through an unsecured space to the secured limo. And in that space, in the from the unsecured press corps is when Hinckley opened up uh, with his pistol, his 22, and and one of the rounds. And I don't know if you guys know this, but one of the round, Reagan wasn't shot directly. The the car that they were using, the old limousine, it was a, a Lincoln a Ford limousine. The door, the back doors opened backwards. They were referred to as suicide doors. And when the agent opened the door, Hinckley started shooting one of the rounds hit the corner of the door, the, the, the pillar oh, that ricochet. supports the door when the door is closed, right, a ricochet. And it was a 22, and the round flattened out to about the size of a dime and hit Reagan underneath the arm and, you know, cut him, went into it, and almost hit his heart, got very close to his heart. But there wasn't any blood right away because it was in his armpit. And when he put his arm down, he was closing the wound. Not until they got the car, and after a minute or so, and they were on their way to the White House, the agent, Jerry Parr was talking to the president and checking him out. And all of a sudden there was a spot of blood on his lip. And then he asked Reagan another question and there were three spots of blood. And then they swung the car around and went to GW hospital. Reagan was literally bleeding out in the car, you know? So, so my point to all this story is this long story is, is they have a history of continuously making the same mistakes call it ego, call it laziness, call it, you know, whatever, they, they get the money and they use it for other things. Who knows what it is? It's corruption. It's stupidity. And, you know, they, they listen, they know how to secure. They know how to do their jobs, you know, under normal circumstances. They know that fence line is vulnerable. They knew Butler County, that building, was inside a proper secured area, but they didn't have the manpower. They, and, again, if they're not doing it on purpose, it's just that it's, it, I say it's, it's, um, it's incompetency and stupidity, and, and there, there, there's clearly, especially in Butler, there's clearly a segment of the Secret Service management high up that is purposely robbing his detail of the need and manpower. And so, you know, that's the way I see it, and, and that's what, you know, the evidence that we have right now sort of proves. Well, the Butler thing's just an excuse. I mean, first off, yesterday's kind of inexcusable too. But um, it, it all is. But it all Butler is, is just mind-boggling that that guy had that angle. I can't even. I still can't even believe that. But yeah, go ahead. Three billion dollar budget. Three billion dollars. I, I mean, you, you have to grasp how much a billion dollars is. It's insane. And and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they don't need it. I'm saying they're not spending it correctly, and they're making bad decisions. And nobody's held accountable. The the person that was. The woman that was the director of the Secret Service, who was friends of of, Jill, of Joe Biden's wife, that's how she got the job as the yes. director. Um, I mean, she was an agent before that, but she was on the, the vice president Biden's team. Well, there was rumor because, she helped clean up some messes, basically, oh, for the that's Biden. not a rumor. That is not a rumor. No, absolutely. I have the same information. Yeah. It's exact. She helped clean up a lot of the stuff that he did and that the family did and that, that uh, Hunter Biden did. Right. Absolutely. 
And uh, and as a reward, and because they knew they could kind of control her, they made her director. And um, so anyway, she should have been fired. The guy below her should have been fired. And now it's happened again. And and what? Nothing. Nothing. You know. Oh my God, that's terrible. The news. The the, the mainstream media is blaming Trump for his for own golfing. assassination. Thing. They're blaming him for golfing. Actually, they're, they're, uh, they're blaming him for golfing. They're blaming him for for, for raising Swift. the rhetoric. Yeah. 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 Right? For yeah. saying I hate I mean, Taylor Swift, which to me, I clearly took that as like a joke, basically. Like it's like yeah. saying I hate, you know, Elvis or something. Yeah. Like he just doesn't like her music or whatever. Like, I mean, I didn't take that seriously. I doubt Trump seriously like has a raging hatred well, for Taylor Swift. Yeah. But yeah, they try to blame him uh for raising the rhetoric. When, like you said, if there'd been just, you know, checkpoints on the roads coming into that course. This guy was completely Looney Tunes. We've been watching videos of him all day. I mean, it, it wouldn't have been hard to spot for for agents who are trained to spot these types of individuals, no, right? Listen, uh, if that guy, yeah, like I said before, if that guy had been stopped at a checkpoint, he would have. He probably would have blurted out, "I'm here to kill Trump because he's <laughs> one." He, I mean, when you look at those pictures of him, he's functional crazy. Yes, he's how, for whatever reason. It doesn't matter because the outcome is the same. Whether it's because he's on, he takes drugs, or it's because he has mental instability, or because he's such a zealot and he's such a fan of the Ukraine and and what, with these, uh, uh, you know, war, these people that want this war um, going on, um, you know, that mentality. Uh, whatever the reason is, the outcome is the same. That he convinced himself that he could do this, and he damn near did it. And you know, it, it might not have gone as it might have been worse than what it was. I mean, luckily, a, a local passerby saw the car, put two and two together, took a picture of it, and well, he could have got was, away. Yeah. Oh, listen, I'm surprised he didn't. I really am. And and you know, again, I I want to see what happens now. I, I saw that he was charged, and I saw some of the charges that were he was. Um, they hit him with just gun for, charges right now for fe- being a for felon now, with yeah. a gun. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, and that's that. fine. Yeah. No, that's fine. Well, because those are the easiest you, charges to hit him on at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, to have a to have a rifle like that with the serial numbers manipulated is it's, a big deal. Yeah. It's a, it well, be to have a gun years. as a felon is a big deal too. But uh, so is the. Oh, but no. that's an even no, bigger. Yeah, that's deal. right. I forgot. He's already a convicted felon. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. That so he's looking at already like fourteen to twenty years. Twenty is what they said. Yeah. 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 So anyway. So what's your next question? And well, I, yeah, and I I didn't have a problem with him hitting him with those charges first because those are the easiest charges, no. right? And you know, no. I'm sure they'll hit him with attempted assassination. Yeah, I'm not sure I trust the FBI that much, but but well, I, I know I know the way this works. Like just to give you an idea, you know, my my last 12 years um, in the federal government, I was an air marshal, right, flying on planes with guns, sure. looking for the next terrorist attack, right? So one of the things that that was stressed to us. Um, in the very beginning, like when we first started training up was, you know, about because you know, a lot of the people that were hired didn't come from law enforcement. They were, this was their last, first law enforcement job. And they were teaching them about reading the rights, reading the rights. And, and, you know, finally somebody said, you know, well, you know, you have to be careful with that. If you're, you know, so we actually in the, in the air marshals, they're actually trained not to, on the plane. If you arrest somebody, don't worry about reading them the rights. Don't ask them any questions. You don't want to give them, you don't want to read them the rights and give them Miranda because you don't know all the circumstances. You know, you don't know what's happened on the ground. You don't know. You want to give the FBI and any other prosecuting agency the leeway to do, you know, as long as you take care of them, you protect them. uh, Don't ask them any questions that pertain to the crime so much other than safety questions. Like, you know, well, you don't have to bomb. Miranda someone until they're arrested, uh, right? Am no, I that's wrong my with point. The... Yeah, until right. if they're that's just detained, point. you don't have to Miranda somebody, right. yeah, right? That's exactly right. And but you are, on a, you are on a clock, but when you're in an airplane and the doors closed, that's different. There's different laws, you know, the air marshal, yes. air marshal, um, the air marshals can we can, um, process, we, we can, and we can, uh, excuse me, um, the law that we use is you know, U.S. code. We also can enforce maritime code. We can also enforce um, D.C. code because the agency that we work for is headquartered in Washington, D.C. So if, if there's something goes wrong, we can figure out something to prosecute them with. So, but anyway, I just wanted to make that point that, you know, you don't necessarily, in these cases, in some of these cases, you don't read them the rights right away. You know, you secure the area, you, 
secure them, you keep them safe, you don't ask them any questions pertaining to the crime, and then, you know, see what happens next. And, and so, yeah, and let others handle that. And and I'm not right. sure everybody knows, and that's, what, that's why I said that. You don't have to, yeah. p- police don't no. have to read you your rights until no. you're actually arrested. Was, yeah. Right. That's not the way it was actually designed, but no, but, uh, but that's how it years works. <laughs> ago, a guy named, yeah, years ago, a guy named Miranda in California sued the government, and that's where it came from. Yes. So his name was literally Miranda. So anyway, so uh, um, little history yeah, lessons so, there. Um, yeah. But back to an earlier point, uh, and then I yeah. have a, a post that that seems, I would say, maybe schizo. Uh, but these are the th- the things that are being put out there. Um, and somebody in the chat said too many chiefs, not enough Indians, uh, talking about, uh, some of the secret service stuff, perhaps. Yeah, uh, correct. and, um, I was describing it. So I have a degree in political science and so I know a little bit about, uh, bureaucratic sure. warfare and politics at its core is a competition over resources. Uh, and it's the same way for these bureaucratic agencies uh, yeah. as well. They're competing over resources. They're competing over money. Uh, more money means more jobs, bigger buildings, right. uh, bigger, more oh, perks yeah. for the agents, more perks for the C-suite people or 11th floor people, as you would say. Yeah. Um, so they're constantly Secret Service competing with FBI and you, you know what I mean, over over money, uh, oh, et cetera, right? right? Uh, yeah. And so... That's a constant theme that I don't think people understand, right? And the CIA, right. and there's all these other the the Defense yeah. Intelligence Agency uh, as well. Like all these people are competing for resources, uh, just like just like political parties are, just like uh, political factions are. It's the same way yeah. within the bureaucracy that I think people don't really understand that. No, you're right, and I'll give you a kind of a good example that everybody can sort of understand. So the oldest law enforcement agency is the U.S. Marshal, right? And then, this, then the Secret Service, and the Secret Service was sort of accidentally invented during the Civil War. Um, Lincoln hired a guy named Pickerton, Pickerton Security, which the company's still around today, to do intelligence work for the North during the Civil War in the South. Anyway, um, so Pickerton started referring to himself as being in Lincoln's Secret Service. It's just the way they spoke back then. There's no legal legality to the name Secret Service. There's no, the Secret Service is technically no more secret than the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, right. you know, other than, than, the, the, than the information about presidential movement or protection, right? So, um, so then um, Lincoln, uh, right, actually, I, I think it was the, either the day before or the day of his assassination, he signed into law the Secret Service law that make let, lets them go fight counterfeit. That's what that one of the other things they were. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that at one point. Yeah, go ahead. it's all about the counterfeit. That's their main job was counterfeiting. They didn't actually start doing real protection um, full time till Theodore Roosevelt, Roosevelt, uh, T.R. And um, so, and actually, while T.R. was president, one of the agents protecting him actually got killed. And it wasn't from a gunshot. He was killed in a carriage accident. And uh, a guy was thrown out of the carriage and died. And uh, so anyway. Um, but I think most people don't realize that they're responsible for, for monitoring counterfeiting. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've known that for a long time. Credit, card, but, yeah, yep. credit card fraud, cell phone fraud. And, and like everybody else, they got their hands in human trafficking. Yeah. You know, because of good, and, you know, I mean, that, that sounds really great. They're trying to fight human trafficking. Trafficking. But, you know, from my perspective, if we were really worried about human trafficking, um, it would be fixed, um, you know. So well, anyway, would, yeah, that's the story. For but it just time. sounds like they have their hands in too many pies, right? Or, they do. You, you know what I mean? Uh, or their fingers it's in too many, many pies. Too yeah. many protection details. Too many protection details. Did I mention about the how many protection details there are? Was that... When I was talking yeah, to you guys. I, I don't know if you gave the specific number or not. I don't recall. Right. I think you said 28 or something. And it's probably higher now, though, well, I would imagine. It, yeah, it's higher than that now. And here's the thing. There's no reason for the Secret Service to be protecting a president after 10 years he's been out of office. And actually, Bill Clinton, that's the law that he passed. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. And then Barack Obama changed it to for a lifetime. It needs to be changed back and, and left that way. There's no reason. Listen, I don't know exactly what the what the Clintons and the Obamas are doing in their spare time, but it sounds like they're meddling in, in, in our government and our elections. They are. I find it I find it heinous that the taxpayer is paying for their security. 
So they make plenty of money. Listen, the Obamas and the Clintons can afford multiple houses on places that you and I will never go. Um, and, you know, very expensive places in Hawaii and, and Martha's Vineyard and upstate New York. And so they can afford their own protection. Uh, and that's the way it was at, at one time. Um, so th- that's one of the first things that needs to happen. Stop protecting these former presidents. And I, they need to shorten it from 10 years down to five years or even even shorter, two years. Well, plus these people, protection. you know, you, they get out of office, they get rich. Or, or you know what I mean? Like uh, they have yeah. plenty of money yeah. or they're rich before they go in. In some cases, they have, Trump, or, money. You know. they have plenty of money and the taxpayer pays them a stipend. Yep. Like to, to have an office. They do. The presidential office. With foreign leaders. And yes. that's fine. But they're all, they're all, they're all independently wealthy. You know, all of them. There's nobody that there's an exception. And, um, and and these people live a long time. I mean, I don't know if your listeners, are, you know, some of your listeners might not be old enough to remember, but, you know, John Kennedy's vice president was a guy named um, um, Johnson. Um, and um, yeah. Lyndon, right, Lyndon Johnson. And so Lyndon Johnson uh, died like 65, I think. And, and um, he had a heart attack. And, um, you know, politics aside, he was an interesting kind of guy, and um, he was very. Lyndon colorful. Johnson is a legendary politician. Uh, yes, actually, he is. yes, He's yes. Colorful. Master you know, of the uh, Senate. There's a whole series of books written about him. Oh uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, I've read I read some of that research in the second book. So anyway, so um, Johnson dies. His wife lives. I don't know how long. Christ, she might even still be alive. Her name is Lady Bird Johnson. Yes. And I mean, 30 years later, the Secret Service is still spending money on a detail to protect her. I'm sorry, that's not, you know. And then, of course, there's emotions involved. You know, these old Democrats in Congress, well, I knew Lyndon Johnson, and we should protect America. (laughs) You know, no. And who really wants to kill Lady Bird Johnson 30 fucking years after? They literally made a a movie about it. I know. Guarding Tess. Guarding Tess. Yeah. I've seen it. And it was pretty close. Some of it was pretty close. You know. But anyway, it's a good movie, uh, by the way. Uh, I'll say that. Now I have a question. Um, first off, I, I'm going to ask you a question about Bill Clinton himself because I watched this. But I want to ask you this first because I read a I read this post out earlier, and you know normally um, I w- I would think something like I lean towards the non conspiratorial usually, uh, even though just because usually I I, I forget is it Occam's razor? It usually yeah. if it can be explained by stupidity or just incompetence. Uh, that's usually the answer, right? right? Um, right. That's not to say there haven't been conspiracies, and there aren't some sure. that I that I give some credence to because there are. But I just uh, about ten percent of the time, I'm not like you know some of my audience are more like seventy percent right. sometimes of the time. Sure. Uh, but I just lean towards you know usually it's just a mistake or stupidity or lack of resources or whatever. But this post and this post has nineteen thousand likes and half a million views and probably double that by now. And again, I have no idea uh, if this uh, is true, but this guy says a source, again, he's saying this, Health Ranger on Twitter, uh, a source tells me the leak of Trump's whereabouts is coming from Homeland Security, not the Secret Service. Homeland Security is leaking location details to the FBI, and FBI is running the assassins. Now, again, this is a very serious accusation. Uh, The entire top leadership of the FBI is desperately trying to figure out how to eliminate Trump while the loyal elements of the Secret Service are trying to stop it. Homeland Security and U.S. State Department are full-on treasonous criminal ops at this point, is this guy's opinion. Again, not me saying this. Uh, If Homeland uh, can't eliminate Trump soon, State Department will make sure a war begins with Russia. Russia, if they fail, hundreds of top people within FBI and Homeland are going to either flee the country or be criminally prosecuted under a Trump presidency. This is what's at stake. Now, this, again, now that's a pretty wild statement, right? Uh, at first, Blanche, but um, I, I don't know uh, any commentary you would have on that, but the fact that that is going around and people are are, are eating that up is, is a pretty serious, seriously bad no. thing in and of itself, even whether it's true or not. Here's the thing. I, I, I do like you do. I, and, and, and I use the, the Kennedy assassination as an example. Set aside the conspiracy theory and look at the facts that we know. And, and I won't go into that now. But, but back to your statement about the, what this guy said. I understand 100% how he came to that. And I will tell you, based on the information that's out there and what he's saying, I don't think it's that far-fetched. Now, I don't believe 
Okay. Part of my brain, the brain that, the part of my brain that has an American flag stamped on it and, right. and tells you that if you cut me, I will bleed red, red, white, and blue. And, um, you know, and how much I, you know, I hate our government, but I love our country. And I, and I love living here. But I would tell you that that part of my brain makes it hard to think that we're that corrupt. But look at what's happened in the last 60-some days. And, and look how crazy some of these government employees and con, you know, members of Congress are suggesting that it's okay that somebody should uh, assassinate Donald Trump and other members of Congress back when he was still president. If you see somebody that's a Trump supporter at the gas station, yeah, you should go and get yeah. in their face. Right. And, and um, you know, Ma uh, Mad Max, I call her. And uh, <laughs> Maxine so, Waters. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mad Max. And so anyway, so. I understand why somebody believes that. And, um, and here's the thing. What's the sense of the, our conversation that he's right or he's wrong? He's either one or the other, right? The outcome could possibly still be the same. Are we not being told right. that Ukraine and the United States are going to decide to use American-made long-range missiles to attack Russia's interior? It, it, didn't we just hear that? Yes, I just read a thing about it that they're no, going to allow that so, soon. So, yes. so and, and is it is it a stretch to believe that the? I mean, is it not obvious that some parts of the FBI are corrupt? And based well, based on what we've seen, I mean, the, the the DOJ and the FBI are prosecuting Trump for questioning the election that he, in my opinion, didn't lose. Uh, you know, again, I just picked the state of Pennsylvania. They got eight hundred. They processed eight hundred thousand more mail-in ballots than they sent out. That's not a glitch. That's theft. It's fraud. So just you know, I just looked at the state of Pennsylvania where I lived at the time, and you know, so this guy, you know, I hope he's wrong, but the ideal that he's completely wrong or that whether he's right or wrong, some of the outcome is going to be the same is, right. is a fact, you know, and uh, you know, so so you know, I, I, I'll. Careful what you wish for and say some prayers. So, well, anyway. and, and that's kind of my point. Whether he's right or wrong, it almost doesn't even matter because people are believing it. And it's like I, it's weakening faith in all of our institutions. And, um, you know, you've seen I talk about this on the show sometimes. You know, they try to kick Trump off some ballots and there's right. uh, some constitutional fraying. If you know anything about uh, like uh, constitutional norms are being ignored, yeah. et cetera. If you know anything about right. the collapse of the Roman Republic, uh, I mean, these are, these are the, uh, yeah, the Roman Republic uh, and how the signs, the signs are there. Yeah. The yeah. signs are really there. Uh, and these are like yeah. really important things that people might not think are important, uh, but they actually are. And this is a clip and I won't play it right now cause you won't be able to hear it, sure. but I played it earlier. Uh, and this is Trump's finance director in Mississippi um, claims that the FBI that that he's had people tell him that they can't give or they don't want to give Trump money or can't give him money because they're afraid of a visit from the FBI. Uh, and why it we, happened? Yeah. Is it really? Yes. Yes. There's finance people that have come forward and said that they've been harassed by the FBI. Absolutely. Large financial people, people that can donate a lot of money. Yes, I've seen the story. Now, I'm not telling you that it's 100% true. Um, I don't know that, but nobody is disputing it. Um, and again, when you want to ask how, how corrupt they are, look what we've seen in the last couple of years. The Department of Justice. Here's a list of politicians that have questioned the election. Al Gore. Yes. Al Gore publicly questioned the election that he lost to George W. Bush, the first one. Uh, Hillary Clinton, all over. She's written books about it. How the, you know, first it was the women's fault, then it was stolen. It was Russia, Russia, Russia. Hillary, it has been, proved, it has been proved that Hillary Clinton paid a British intelligence agent to yes. make up a fake thing about Donald Trump, Paul. Russia, Russia, Russia. Right. Nothing. Who's been prosecuted? Nobody. Was, was Hillary, right. She destroyed State Department computers and laptops and phones and bleach bit at them after they'd been subpoenaed. That's a major crime. How much time did she get? Zero. So our DOJ and FBI are corrupt beyond comprehension. So the idea that they're doing something else like that, like pressuring people with money, it, it's not a stretch whatsoever. They're insane. We've, we've gone off the rails. 
And your comparison to the to um, the Roman Empire is scary and correct, you know. So and and Stacey Abrams is another uh, in Georgia. She there ran for go. governor. Um, John yeah. Kerry basically questioned the twenty twenty uh, the two thousand four election uh, in Ohio. Did. And Ken Blackwell was a Secretary of State, and they said they shut down the. The, uh, the voting yeah. boost too early, and that's the only reason he lost. And so, right. like, this has been going on. It's the criminalization of politics, honestly, is what it is. And, right. So um, what we're discussing, yeah, yes. what we're discussing is free speech. Yes. And if you want these, if you listen, uh, there's, you know, I can count on three fingers the politicians that I like, and, and Trump is one of them. And, oh, actually, I don't even know if I have three anymore. But anyway, <laughs> I, like, I like Trump. Not because he's Donald Trump, because he's Donald Trump, the businessman. And I worked inside the White House for, for 12 years, the West Wing. And after three years, I came to the conclusion that we need a businessman that owed nobody anything. And guess what? He's, he's here now. And um, so the, 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 these, these guys are so corrupt, and, and he's not. And that's the problem. He's not in on that. And, and I don't. And I'll give you another little tidbit of why everybody is so wound up about this guy getting elected again. You just saw recently that former vice president Dick Cheney oh, is God. war criminal. Right. Okay. Uh, but yeah. So I'm going to get right. So set, set aside that mentality just for a second. Okay. And not that it's not important. And, 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 you know, it's not hard to make those arguments, but here's what, here's what I learned a long time ago during the first, during the second Iraq war. The Bush administration, Dick Cheney, all those people were convinced that they were going to flip a switch and in five years, Iraq would be almost just like the United States, right? This is crazy. Well, a, lot of these, a lot of these State Department and, and government officials and uh, uh, um, staff members, they all invested heavily in the Iraqi currency. They bought tens of thousands of dollars for, for pennies on the dollar, right? Millions of dollars. A friend, the way, the reason I know this happened is a friend of mine contacted me and said, Hey, uh, you know, I'm on so-and-so's detail. He's offering me this deal and gave me this phone number to call this guy and buy the currency. And I said, Oh, okay, well, good luck. You know, he goes, okay, you don't want to get in on it. I'm like, no, no, nah. absolutely not. I'm uncomfortable with the whole thing, you know, whatever. And so, so that's what part of this is about. You can't, you can't set that aside. Congress, the, the, the administration at the time, they're all invested in this because, and what's the problem with Donald Trump? He's not a warmonger. He won't take shit from anybody. He will destroy you if he has to, but he's not going to go into Iraq and try to straighten it out like we did in Europe. It's not possible. You're dealing with a different mentality. You're dealing, you know, Europe was already settled in and, and had, um, you know, uh, first world mentality, so to speak, you know? Uh, you're not going to do that in one of these Middle Eastern countries where they don't read calendars almost. Well, they you know? don't and have so, the – like you can't just implement democracy. No, like you have to no, have the right. um, the culture for democracy no. already, right? right. Like, or, or, or even a republic. Technically, we're a no, republic. No, right. But, but, but right. you have to have those ideals already. Uh, and honestly, a strong man like Saddam, that's what they need in Iraq, right? Like, I mean, that, that, in some no, of these countries, a, that's what they need. There was an argument to be made for that, right? There yes. was an argument – you know, you don't, you don't want, you know, after he fell, you saw... Not that he's a good guy, but, by the way. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. But he did control the crazy. Yes. You know, and, and I don't like the way he did it. Who no, would? of course not. But you, you understand the mentality. And and, um, and so anyway, so, so keep that in mind and do a little research about the Iraqi... I, I can't remember what it's called. It was called the Dora or something. You know, whatever it's called. The Dinar, I think maybe... Um, I know the Kuwaiti yeah. dinar. I don't know if Iraq calls it. Dinar, that may be what it is. Yeah, but yeah, Kuwaiti so, dinar is like the most valuable currency on earth, I think, actually. Uh, of mine, yeah. If you're wondering why Liz Cheney is as crazy as she is and her father is supporting, uh, supporting the, the party that called him uh, um, Darth Vader, that's, that could be one of the reasons. I don't know that it's 100%. It's also because Trump is not a warmonger, and it all kind of pushes together. You know, defense spending will be less. You know, they're never going to get Iraq to, to turn into, uh, you know, France. So, <laughs> anyway. Well, that was one of the yeah. first things that um, 
push me towards Trump. First off, I just like the hand grenade aspect and how he freaks them out. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the other thing Ooh, was how he attacked the neocons and how he attacked the Bush yeah. family for what they did to our country. And, um, you know, I'm on, I would say I'm on the right, uh, now, but I used to be on the left growing up like yeah. a lot of people. Uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, I did support Afghanistan because it was like, Hey, we gotta, we gotta get, go get them. Right. Uh, even though that was no, a mistake. No, I did too. Listen, yeah. I, I did At too. first I supported I mean, I that. Conservative, yeah. But, but I, I I'd never supported the, Iraq, though, because I was like, this is total well, bullshit, right? Like, I mean, I no. did because I believed that we were fighting them there and not here. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, I, no, I just, would tell you. Go ahead. I'm also a person. I would tell you that I was also a person that was didn't have a dog in the hunt. I mean, I was in the right. Secret Service or the, or the Air Marshal, but I wasn't going to go over there. You right. know, I was too old. And, 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 tr and actually, I don't know if you know this, for your listeners, uh, if you're in the Secret Service, you're exempt from the draft. No, if, you're, I didn't. if you're if you're a sworn agent or a sworn uniform division officer, you're exempt from the draft. Now, I'm not saying that you'd want to avoid the draft, but the but the theory behind the law is, and, and I think it's pretty good. Is and this came up during the Second World War that so many guys were going in that they were losing. You know, your job is continuity of government when you're in sure. the Secret Service, right? You're protecting the president, so that takes precedent over you going and killing our enemy with your bare hands. So, um, so that's that's one thing that your uh, listeners. Yeah, I think know. that's a fair law, actually. Um, yeah, you know, I'm fine with it. And yeah. the other thing is, here's another secret: you get paid no matter what. There <laughs> is a legal, there is a legal treasury slush fund. That's how they described it when they told us about it. Uh, that the Secret Service employees, the agents and officers, no matter what, get paid. They continuously get paid. You Doesn't know, matter if it's government shut down or not; they get paid. Shut down? Day. Nope. We got paid. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that actually. Yeah. Um, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. Uh, and the Iraq War, I could understand supporting it maybe at the beginning, but like it completely yeah. boondoggle. Uh, and once you see what was really what? behind that later on, um, and, and we, it was we, a different time we, though. But like, uh, man, go ahead, yeah, finish. No, you, no, no, you're. You're saying the same thing. I'm sorry I interrupted you. There was, you know, I, I worked with so many guys when I was in the air marshal that, that fought those wars. And, and, and you know, they're, they're all good guys, but they're, the ones that weren't, aren't physically maimed or destroyed, they're so disillusioned. And they're, yes. they're such good guys. And they did, I'm telling you, they were fighting for that flag. They're not, they weren't fighting for politics. They don't give a crap about you know, Cheney or Bush's policy. They were fighting because their chain of command says yes. this is the enemy. And, and I, I applaud them for it. And, um, it, you know, it's what I felt I did a little bit when I was in the air force, but I was in the air force during the cold war. It was a different thing. You know, it was the early eighties and, uh, things were different. So, well, I definitely All have right. respect for the people who went over there and I want to cut it. I, I, I want uh, yeah. two more little things. I'll let it go. And we already sure, made up for all the time we lost. Uh, no problem. And sure. then some, by the way, and I appreciate you spending so much time. Oh, um, sure. but, uh, first off, just real quick on that point, uh, a lot of, uh, people, my age and friends of mine went over there and I have the most respect for, uh, for their yeah. service and got, they got maimed some of them and, uh, some killed, oh. some never came back, uh, from my yeah. generation. Uh, and, um, you know, it's a tragedy, but, uh, you know, I see this Jeremy Kaufman. I'll just mention this real quick. He's kind of, he's a libertarian, actually. Uh, but the FBI visited his house today uh, over posts he made on Twitter uh, that are legal speech. Uh, but they visited his house to intimidate him. Uh, and so that's just a little update. And I'll play that for the audience after. But uh, tell us, uh, you mentioned, uh, I thought something was intriguing. Uh, and I know this about Bill Clinton anyway, because I'm I, actually I was born in Memphis, uh, but lived in West Memphis, uh, Arkansas. And so Bill Clinton, when I was a kid, you know, I kind of like Bill Clinton, right? Because it's like, oh, it's the governor right. of Arkansas. Cool. He's going to be president. Uh, sure. And I didn't know everything I know now. But, um, you know, I, he always had that. Uh, you've heard many stories about him being uh, a more warm individual, uh, easier to talk to, kind of um, more empathetic, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. You know, just get along a lot better than Hillary, right? Like, it's just a totally different. You want to know person. how I described him? Yeah. You want to hear how I described him? Go ahead. And, and this is exactly what you're saying. Somebody, when people ask me, you know, about Bill and Hillary, I would say um, Hillary pretty much, in my opinion, had no redeeming value. And it, it does bother me to say that about somebody, but it's true. Bill Clinton is the guy you want to go sit and have a beer with and joke with. Now, you don't trust him to drive your 27 year old niece home, <laughs> but he's a, he's a, I, listen, I got to introduce my parents to him one time 
And I thought my dad was going to have a stroke. You know, he is charismatic. He's kind. And, and he's always on. He's always on. He's always this, you know, he, you watch how, he, you know, when he, he, he meets somebody and he's trying to, to ingratiate himself to them. As he's talking to them, especially a woman, he'll turn sideways and he'll touch the back of her elbow or touch her wrist. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he is, he, 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 listen, I told him, um, I can't remember the guy's name. I used to work with the secret service agent and just coincidentally for about a year, we were always working together. Our, our shift synced up, you know, he was on the agent detail. I was working, I was assigned outside the Oval office. We saw each other all the time. We spent a lot of time together. He was a good guy. And, and we watched him outside Bill Clinton, outside the Oval Office and inside the Oval Office, greeting these people. And he was just turning it on, right? And when, I, when we came out and I closed the Oval Office door and I looked at the agent, he was laughing, shaking his head. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. If Bill Clinton walked out here and told me my name wasn't Gary Byrne, I pulled my ID out just to check. Because I'm not sure. <laughs> you know? So that's who you're talking about. I saw it a hundred times. I saw it, you know, I saw him... You know, just it's, you know, and some of it was good. You know, it, it wasn't all fake bullshit. Some of it, he was so, you know, I, I, I was with him one time at the Oval Office when he greeted a bunch of sick kids. And when I mean sick kids, you know, they were, it was um, the Sunshine Foundation. Right. And this is sort of, the, you know, it was sadder than, than, you know, than a basket full of dead puppies. And, you know, it just, and I watched him control his emotions and talk to these kids that had these horrendous, diseases and some of them were listed, missing limbs and and parts of their brains and skulls and and you know and i thought to myself this guy spent and, and no bullshit he spent an hour and a half on a saturday and he didn't know they were coming like the reason he met with them is because when when they were there i gave him a tour and during my tour i got a notification that the president was going to come over to the oval office so when Nick, betty curry and nancy hernreich showed up i went in there and said listen I'm doing this tour and they said, Oh, keep going until he gets here. And I said, well, that's not the point. And I told him what it was. And she said, and Nancy Hernreich, who was from Arkansas turned to me and said, um, bring them over here, bring them in the Rose garden. When you're ready for the president, come in and tell me and we'll bring them out. They never, you know what I mean? Like, so they did the right thing, you know, and he went out there and he talked to these kids for an hour and a half. And some of them had speech impediments because of their diseases and their, their medication. And it was, it was the time of their life. Well, you know, to, and to me, he had that in him. It's a shame that like it turned out the way it did. You know, to me, Bill right, Clinton right. is the greatest living politician of our lifetime. Uh, and um, also, he so, has he has a I lot would, of good I qualities. Like, like, yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah I, I don't think he would. You spend a lot of time with him too, right? No, uh, I'm telling you, he could spend shit in the gold. It's yes. unbelievable. It, it's just a shame yeah. what it turned into and what he right. actually could have done, you know, when he was right. in office, in my opinion. Right. And, of course, you know, right. I know they've done a lot of dirt, and I'm not excusing any of that. Uh, no, but right. but uh, it's a shame because uh, he really did have those skills, uh, and, and yeah. it wasn't all fake. Um, and yeah. so uh, it yeah. is a shame. Uh, but yeah. I, I wanted to thank you uh, for spending a little extra time with us, uh, and uh, I hope everything's going well. I hope the interruption wasn't yeah. t- nothing too serious or anything like that. Uh, I no, wanted we're to, good. I wanted to pull you out and make sure they weren't. <laughs> yeah, who knows um, what's happening these days? Uh, uh, yeah. But I wanted to plug your books, Crisis of Character, A White House Secret Service Officer Discloses His Firsthand Experiences with Hillary, Bill, and How They Operate. And also, see, this one is maybe even more relevant now, uh, Secrets of the Secret Service, The History and Uncertainty and future of the U.S. Secret Service, both available on Amazon. Is there anything else you would like to, to uh, plug here or tell people where to find you, et cetera? No, no I have a YouTube channel. Um, I don't do much with them anymore, but there's some funny videos on there, uh, some student videos and, and some other stuff, um, you know, and um, the books, they're, they're on Amazon. They're also, you might be able to still find them at, book, at bookstores. Yeah. Um, and the, 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 um, if you look up the books on Amazon, it'll tell you that the, that the, um, publisher is Hachette and, um, you can go on their website and still find them too. And, um, so, um, it's Hachette and their subsidiary that print actually did my book was, uh, center street. So they can be found, be found there too. And I appreciate you having me on and, uh, and, and, uh, I, I, uh, 
you know, don't, if you uh, come up with another reason to have me on, shoot me a text. All right. 100%. I will. Thank you. Gary Byrne, former secret service. Thank you, brother. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, now that was something. All right. I'm proud of that one. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.